We have Shivali ji next. Um, as the introduction has mentioned, Shivali ji is a new contemporary voice who is uh, probably in connection with another type of shakti. She has unearthed and released the shakti of speech and communication. So if anybody has Saraswati Devi resident on her tongue in the contemporary age, I think Shifali ji qualifies for that. So Shifali ji, you have 10 minutes, please. Thank you, very kind. Uh, most of what I wanted to say, actually Madhuji has said it very beautifully. I find it very irksome when in India people talk about feminism, when it is a very limiting philosophy, actually. So what empowerment? Who is empowering women? You have to, you are already empowered, you are Shakti. It's what our philosophy has told us. So what is this question of somebody else coming from outside and empowering you? That, that concept I've never really understood. When we are saying in our prayers, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu, what does it mean? It means, O oh Goddess who is within all sentient beings. It doesn't talk about just, just women, but the Goddess, the feminine tattva, is present in all sentient beings, in men, in trees, in animals, in birds, in everything. And that Devi present in all Bhutas as Shakti, as Branti, as Yukti, as, as a mother, and we worship that, that feminine. We come from that culture. But what I find it immensely saddening is this whole uh, new construct where everything Indian and everything Dharmic is ridiculed. So uh, you uh, track uh, conversations on WhatsApp. And if you, fee if you find that somebody is you know, allegedly um, behaving in a very old-fashioned way, old-fashioned according to somebody else, that person is being told mockingly, like, why are you being so savitri? Aap itni badi savitri kyu ho rahe ho? Savitri ne kya kiya tha kisi ko malum hai? People think that Savitri was, you know, a complete walkover. What did Savitri do? Savitri was a princess. She was told to get married to a prince. I mean, her father said, you can get married to anybody whom you want. She chose Satyavan, who was a penniless person who lived in a forest. She said, I do not want to marry a rich man. I do not want to marry a prince. I want to marry this man because he fits into my idea of a good husband. She chose him, even though she knew that he had a short life and that he was going to die very early. And his parents lived in a forest and they lived in extreme penury. But she said, no, this is the man I want to marry. She went against her parents' wishes. She married Satyavan. She went into the forest. She started living in the forest. And when, uh, on, on the day that was foretold that Satyavan was going to die, they say that Yama came with this Pasha to take Satyavan. And Savitri said, I'm sorry, you can't take him. And she started following Yama. So after some time, Yama actually said, y you know what, uh, you, you cannot really follow me. His life is over. That's why I'm taking him. You need to go back. She said, I'm not going to go back. So Yama said, ask me a boon and take that boon and go back. So the first boon she asked was that, May my father-in-law, who had lost his eyesight, may he he's regain his eyesight. Yama said, OK, he, your uh, father-in-law will get his eyes. Now go back. She didn't go back. She kept on following Yama. At the next point, Yama again asked her, now please go back. You cannot come any further. This is, you are still in Buloka, and uh, Satyavan is coming with me. So she said, no, I am coming with you. So then Yama asked her, take another boon. So she said, let my father-in-law regain his kingdom and let him get his wealth back. And she kept on following. So finally, Yama got really fed up with her. And he said, you know, ask for one more boon, but just go back. But you cannot ask for Satyavan's life back. Short of that, you can ask for anything else. So she smiled at him. And she said, may I become a mother of uh, good, worthy, whatever children, you know, of good virtue. So Yama said yes, because she had technically not asked for her husband's life back. And then she said, but you said Tatastu, and how am I going to get those kids? I need my husband back. So then Yama gave her her husband's life back, and that's how, she, that's why she's worshipped. She didn't do, she, she didn't go around a tree, you know, she actually had a debate with Yama. She made, she, she made him lose in an argument, and that's how she got her husband's life back. So if somebody says you're a, Saras, you're a Savitri, that's a huge compliment. That means you're capable of taking life's decisions. You're capable of fighting for what you hold dear. But that icon has been used in recent years by modern educated Indians to 
uh, you know signifies something that is that is so contrary to the idea of what sir savitri stands for and even defeating the lord of death yama being the lord of death i mean that really takes some courage and some persistence anybody else any lesser person would have said okay i mean you you're saying so i'm going back but this is such a wonderful allegory it's such a wonderful story of women's empowerment ubhay bharti who was uh, mandan mishra's wife who was he was called ubhay bharati ubhay bharati why ubhay means to and bharati bharati stands for from the root bha which is to give light so she was somebody who gave the light of knowledge to both her father's house as well as to her husband's house that is why she was called ubhay bharati so when adi shankar acharya had a debate with mandan mishra about which uh, way of life was better whether advaita was better or advaita philosophy was better they were so evenly matched that they couldn't find a third person an objective judge who would judge the debate the only person who who had that capability was ubhay bharati and even though she was married to mandan mishra there was conflict of conflict of interest here but still she said i will do it and i will do it impartially and everybody believed that she would do it impartially that is the kind of tradition that we are coming from and which is why it saddens me immensely that in these days it is said that everything about uh, dharmic way is discriminatory against women as she said it is all learnt where there were no uh, uh, where our original way of life was not disturbed we still kept on to our original thought which was you know uh, mother worshiping devi worshiping uh, feminist sort of i don't like the word feminist but you know the 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 shakti kind of uh, uh, the shakti way of thinking let me call it that way we still do by the way if any woman emerges strong for example anywhere else in the world um a strong woman who frightens men would be an object of ridicule jokes and all that but in india any woman who uh, for example indira gandhi was celebrated as the only man in an all women ca ca uh, cabinet and people loved the fact that her male colleagues were frightened of her she was not ridiculed for for it and there are paintings of her as durga incarnate she wasn't exactly the compassionate durga she needed to be she became mother of one or two sons but the and icon that, that is it. used to describe a strong woman is not a haridan or not a xanthipe it's right. durga so that 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 makes a lot of difference which is why i find it immensely shameful that somebody who calls herself quote unquote feminist who didn't like a movie and then she writes an article saying that i was reduced to a vagina reduced to a vagina excuse me in our thought we don't reduce anyone to a vagina how is shiva worshiped in the temple do you just see a linga no what is the base of the linga yoni. it is the yoni it is the vagina because it is the force of creation and together that is how srijan happens together that is how srishti is created so when somebody is using vagina and saying that i am reduced to a vagina you are insulting your own womanhood you are insulting the inner shakti inside you and that is not the indian way of shakti indian way of shakti is a all empowering all em encompassing way which tells not just women but every sentient being that you have the shakti in you thank you shifali ji thank you so much for that uh, passion and um, extremely shakti uh, charged and delivery you just reminded me that um, there is this aspect of colonization we've spoken about it uh, outside of the forum as well but colonization is so deeply embedded that sometimes i don't even think we recognize that it's not part of our traditions um when i was doing some research on our traditions once i was told that even the mahurat aspect we have our rishte and we have the bridal ceremonies and the <coughs> marriage ceremonies in the north performed at night time and so on occasion the mahurat is actually not at night time but even then it was done at night time and the historical reason he gave to me was that in times gone past not too distant past when uh, an indian girl would attain an age whereby she was ready for marriage then she would be kidnapped and so the tradition developed to perform the rituals under cover of darkness mm. and yet even in the north and certainly outside of india many people still 
look for a time, and the most inconvenient time in the middle of the night, to perform the, uh, the marriage ceremonies. So this is a, a very, very deep issue, the colonization and the decolonization of the monomaya kosh of this country. So thank you very much for bringing those pointers in.